What's up guys and welcome to another deck tech video. Today we are jumping into Legacy with Eldrazi 12 post. An absolutely monstrous deck that puts all of you modern Eldrazi Tron players to shame. This deck is designed to ramp like crazy and play the biggest, baddest cards in the game. But before we jump in, I do want to mention that this is a Legacy deck and therefore will be very expensive. That being said, part of the reason for picking this deck is to give you all a chance to brew with it and send us your budget versions. All of that out of the way, let's start by looking into the lands that make this deck tick as they are the most important part. The name 12 Post comes from running a series of Locust Lands, Glimmer Post, and Cloud Post, which both have escalating abilities based on the number of Locust Lands already in play. Cloud Post is really the key card by producing one generic mana for every Locust on the battlefield. This allows you to ramp incredibly quickly into the big scary finishers that will win you the game. Glimmer Post is also great as it beefs up the Cloud Post and gives you a point of life for every other Locust. With this deck, that life gain can actually save you from an all-out assault from some of the fast aggro decks, making it a great utility land to have at your disposal. With a playset of each of these lands, we quickly become aware that that is only 8 posts. The other 4 come from a playset of Vesuva. Vesuva has a unique ability to come into play tapped and as a copy of any land on the battlefield, meaning all 12 posts are now present. The downside to Vesuva is that it does come into play tapped, but because copying a Locust Land gives you an extra mana from the Cloud Posts anyway, it basically adds mana right away, making it an excellent include for this deck. A playset of Eldrazi Temple and two Eye of Ugans also help you ramp into the big Eldrazi cards, which you will then use to smash your opponent in the face. Eye of Ugin also allows you to fetch out any colorless creature if you can pay 7 mana, which you will almost always be able to do with this deck. The rest of the land base includes a mix of Ancient Tombs and City of Traders for quick ramping, and Urborg along with Caracas to not only give you some color fixing but also provide outs to decks focusing on playing legendary creatures. Moving to the creature slot, we see mostly big stompy Eldrazi's mixed with a couple utility creatures. Four Thought Knot Seers allow you to steal cards from your opponent's hand that could potentially cause you a headache later. Two Endbringers give you some flexibility with massive stats, Important to note that all Embringer's abilities have relevance in Legacy. And finally, two Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger for when you need a big 10-10 creature who instantly blows stuff up. Obviously, with the ramp involved in this deck, these creatures will serve you well. Additionally, some number of Walking Ballistas and Worm Coil Engines provide some extra utility against heavy removal decks and give you a way to punch through some damage in a pinch. Remember, all of these creatures can be fetched out with Eye of Ugin, so you will hopefully be able to grab anything you need at any time during the game. The last pseudo creature we have is Batterskull. This is a great card to have against aggro decks, as the life gain can mean the difference between winning and losing. In case all of these extra huge creatures wasn't enough for you, this deck also runs two Ugin the Spirit Dragons. Ugin gives you yet more interaction with small creature decks, and gives you an extra way to punch through some of that extra damage. Other interactive cards include a playset of Chalice of the Void to help stop combo decks, All is Dust to blow up basically everything that you don't own, and Trinisphere which helps slow down some of the low curve decks and give you the time you need to win the game. Also a few Warping Whales allow for some flexible interaction against a variety of decks. Thran Dynamo and Grim Monolith in tandem with Voltaic Key help you to ramp even more into your creatures, while a one of Coercive Portal helps you draw extra cards and keep up the momentum. Again, the deck is designed to ramp and play big scary Eldrazi, so most of the main board is focused on that game plan. When building a sideboard, you should obviously build for your local meta, but there are a few suggestions that I would like to throw out. Karn is a great bomb to side in when you're playing in the mirror match, or when your opponent has other permanents that you have trouble dealing with in the main board. Ratchet Bomb can also help take care of some troublesome permanents, and in tandem with Voltaic Key, you will be able to blow a lot more stuff up. Sorcerer's Spyglass is also a great card to side in when you just don't have another great way to answer for a particular card. Fairy Macabre is fantastic against graveyard decks like Reanimator, giving you a way to remove their targets before they can resolve at a reanimate. There are plenty of other sideboard options here, so make sure you play around and see what works best for you and your meta. As I mentioned before, this deck does not come cheap, and sitting at $1800 on TCG Player definitely puts it out of a lot of people's price range. The great part is, the engine behind this deck is not actually much at all. The Locust Lands can be picked up for a couple of bucks altogether, and a lot of the ramp spells are cheap as well. If you think you can put together a budget brew for this deck, by all means go for it and comment a link down below. If we like it, we'll use it in an upcoming deck tech video. 
Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this legacy deck tech. If you want to suggest any other deck lists, make sure to comment them down below, and with that, we will see you in the next video.